Hi, I'm Sari Cornwell, Technology Training Librarian with the Athens County Public Libraries with a tech tip for you. In observance of National Consumer Protection Week, I am here to share resources available to protect yourself and your family from scams and identity theft. The information I'm sharing is provided by the Federal Trade Commission or the FTC. Later in this video, I'll show you how you can use the FTC website to report fraud. As a technology trainer, I get many questions about internet security and how to browse the internet safely to avoid viruses and protect personal information. However, the weakest link of our internet security systems is ourselves. Unfortunately, people who are looking to exploit others for money or personal information also realize this weakness. Fraud occurs when a person deceives another person by lying, obscuring the truth, or pretending to be someone else to obtain personal information, often for financial gain. People can think of fraud as the act of unintentionally giving someone access to a social security number or bank account, and there are other ways that fraud happens, and I'm going to share a few with you today. The first step in protecting yourself is to become aware of techniques that are used against us to obtain personal information. One of the most popular types of fraud is the imposter scam. And this is when someone pretends to be a government entity, a trusted business, or a family member um, to get information from you. Oftentimes these imposter scams take place via phone call, email, or text message. Right now the number one way that scammers can reach us is by the telephone. Um, I've had people contact me uh, letting me know that, that Apple or Amazon or some big trusted company had sent them an email that maybe their account had been compromised, provided a phone number to call to change the account information. Um, when you get messages like this and you suspect they could be spam messages, it's good to take a moment and actually look up the name of the company and call that company or directly contact a family member or a friend if you think they are really reaching out to you. Um, not by replying to the email, but by contacting them through other means. Um, you can also make these reports on the FTC website as well. Um, other scams involve um, asking for checks to be written and saying you'll get reimbursed more for writing a check. Um, there are even computer repair scams where a company may contact you either by phone or by email to say that there's something wrong and they can get on your computer and help you and may ask you to download a program that, that you don't know anything about that could harm your computer and steal your personal information. Um, there's even romance scams where uh, individuals will try to build trust and then eventually ask for money um, and you end up with a broken heart and an empty bank account. Um, and especially in these times uh, with the COVID a vaccine coming about, uh, there have been scams where people have received phone calls um, that if they pay money, they can get ahead on the list, um, or that uh, posing to be local health departments and ask for personal information over the phone. Um, so these are things to be aware of. The FTC website um, has a list of these different types of scams. Um, so if you feel um, in your gut that something or some kind of communication doesn't quite look right to you, um, it's good to go to the website um, and then you can also report uh, the fraud. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Here we are on the Federal Trade Commission website at consumer.ftc.gov. Now here on this website, um, even though the focus today is avoiding scams, the FTC website has different categories here across the top of the page that include money and credit, homes and mortgages, health and fitness, jobs and making money, and then privacy, identity, and online security. And I'm coming over here actually to this section that says scams. So let's click on scams since that's our focus today. And this is the page on avoiding and reporting scams. So we have information on how to avoid a scam where you can educate yourself so that you can help identify scams when you see them, information on what to do if you are scammed, starting with changing passwords, who you need to contact, and other important things to consider. And then if you think you see a scam, report it. And I'm going to click here to show you how to report a scam. And this takes us to our reporting page here. 
report to help fight fraud. And it says report now. If I scroll down a little bit, it says protect your community by reporting fraud, scams, and bad business practices. And how this works is um, you, you report as much information as you have available. And this information is actually shared um, you know, with law enforcers to help build cases against some of these companies so that when they are finally caught, um, they can hopefully uh, prevent other people from falling um, victim to some of these scams. So I'm going to click on this Report Now button. Okay, and so is your report about any of these common problems? And so there's uh, what we are, I was referring to as imposter scams or impersonator, either somebody pretending to be the government, a business, a love interest, or a family member, um, something about um, a job or money-making opportunity that might be too good to be true, um, something with phone, internet, or TV service, um, maybe a health scam, uh, maybe just an annoying call. Um, there's also online shopping, sweepstakes prize or lottery to say that maybe you won something, but you have to put money down before you can claim it, auto sale or repair, or remember those extended car warranty phone calls, which many of us have gotten before. Also credit or debit, um, or it's just something else. Um, and so here I'm going to go ahead and click on an impersonator. What happens next is it actually takes me down where I can choose um, who were they pretending to be. So for example, I recently got a message that was supposed to be from a well-known business, uh, but instead it came, it came from some kind of imposter. So I click on that and I can choose continue. And now in the report here, I can put detailed information. And I want to point out at the top of the page, it says, please share as much as you know the details help law enforcement investigations. So you may not know a lot, but any little bit that you do know, um, you know whether they were offering um, or asking for a certain amount of money, what kind of services, or even if you just have a phone number or an email address, that's all important information um, that you can put here. Um, and then once you're finished uh, putting in the details about it, you can even list your comments about what might have happened to you, what information they might have taken. Of course, don't actually put any private information here. And then you can continue to submit your report. Um, so it's very important to, to be able to report fraud and then also identify it more than anything else. So uh, with, our, with our conversation today, um, you know, if you do have questions about any of this, you can always go to the FTC website um, or if you have other questions, you can contact our staff at the Athens County Public Libraries um, because we're here to help you find good sources of information.